So we're just going to jump straight in. Uh, for those of you, blah, blah, for those of you who don't know who I am, <laughs> that's better. My name is Lisa, and I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painted Brushing Co. Um, today we're coming back to this gorgeous little cabinet that we started about two months ago. Um, and after that live, it's just sort of sat there because I wasn't, I wasn't loving it, but. I also was, and I just wasn't sure. So anytime that I'm not like 100% sure with a piece, I step away from it. Um, because if I finish it while I'm not in love with it, I know that I'm not gonna like it. Um, however, the last few days I've been thinking I'm ready to finish it now. I'm really, really liking the door. I just wanna see it finished because I know when it's finished, I know that I'm really going to love it. It's going to look exactly how I've got it pictured in my head. Um, Plus, I also need to clear up my back room because I've got new furniture coming in. So, it has to be done. I've got too many unfinished projects. They have to be done. So, we're going to just sort of do some finishing touches today. It won't be 100% finished by the end of this, but we're going to see how we go. As always, this video will be uploaded to our YouTube. I'm a few weeks behind, so bear with me. Um, it just takes... A little while and my internet's been a bit patchy so bear with me while I get it up onto my YouTube but if you are watching this make sure you hit the like button make sure you subscribe um, and let us know what you think in the comments as always if you've got questions let me know hello Nicola how are you um so and I will say as well the store's still open I've seen one person all day it is still raining it is miserable out there so if I stop that's why, but I don't think, like it's the end of the day, we're not gonna see anybody, so I just wanna get this done. So we're gonna start off today. Let me show you what we sort of did to the top. So last time we popped a coat, a Purico chalk finish in the color carbon, which is the black on that bit. And this is the rest of the cabinet. This might preview your memory a little bit. So really, really beautiful. Um, the top of it, you'll remember, we painted with the carbon, but I still was not 100% happy with it. It had a lot of veneer damage originally. Hello, Deanne. Um, it had a lot of veneer damage, which although I had filled most of it, when we painted it with the carbon, we could just still see too much of that damage. Um, so this morning I went in and I went in with, and I did it in a different color just so you could see. But I don't have my filler here, so I have used uh, Pure Eco's Texture Finish with Pure Eco's ooh, Chalk Finish in the colour Peppercorn, which is a light grey. And I've mixed that so it's really, really thick. You can use Texture Finish, it's really hard um, once it's dry, and it's fantastic for filling. I've used it heaps. I really, really enjoy using it. So, mixed a little bit. And I've just sort of filled it in. You can sort of see those patches. That's probably the biggest one that you guys can see. But filled it all in, given it a good sand, given it a wipe down. Um, of course, the carbon's not looking as carbonish because it's now got some gray on it as well. Um, and then when I've wiped all that dust and that as well, it sort of activates the paint a little bit. So we're ready to paint. So it's much smoother. There's still a couple of really small dings and they're really really minor i don't think they're going to be anywhere as bad as what they were so i'm pretty happy it's also feeling really really smooth obviously it's had a really good sand if you want chalk finish to feel smooth and just beautiful give it a sand between coats and give it a sand after that final coat as well um, before you seal it because it's just going to feel amazing so we're going to start off with the chalk finish let's get these painted and then we're going to talk about talk about the veneer with pure eco's hemp finishing oil and that's probably the bit that i'm most excited about on this one we were going to paint the inside of the cabinet you can see at the moment it's like this maroon red it's a bit ugly to be honest uh, we were going to paint that however my paintbrush won't fit as you can see um and i don't know where my paintbrush is going i have a suspicion i've taken it home so um we won't be doing that today but if you have any suggestions for colors i'd love to hear them i'm not 100 percent sure i know at the moment this is just way too dark for me 
So I know I'm definitely going to go lighter, but I'm not sure if I should go white or if I should go maybe macadamia, which has got like a slight gray to it, um, or if I should go for like a pop of color. So if you've got any suggestions, please let me know in the comments because I'm really, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. So the brush that I'm using today is our 38 millimeter uh, synthetic bristle brush. These are slight oval shape. You can see they've got a very slight curve to them. These are my favorite brushes. Um, they're the only brushes that I use nowadays. I absolutely love them. Um, so if you haven't tried them, give them a go. Uh, Black Friday is coming up. They will be on sale for an extra special price as well. So keep an eye out for that at the end of November. And this is carbon in chalk finish. So my plan is to seal this whole piece, including the chalk finish with the hemp finishing oil. So that's why I'm using the chalk. I really, really love hemp finishing oil over, I should probably show you what I'm doing, hey? <laughs> um, I really love hemp finishing oil over chalk finish. Now, to load your brushes, dip them in, wipe them off, do it two or three times and all you're doing, you only have to do it the very first time you're doing it. That pushes all that paint into those center bristles. After that, every time you dip it back in, do a little dip, wipe some of the excess off, but you certainly don't have to keep dipping it. It just gets that paint onto those center bristles and helps your paint spread out really, really beautifully. Got a couple of suggestions. Mulberry, oh, I do like mulberry. I'm worried it might be a touch dark still, but a purple I think would look really nice. Myrtle, fern, I hadn't thought of fern. I like the idea of fern. All right, let's start painting while I'm talking. <laughs> Otherwise we're never gonna get this done. So carbon, one of my favorite colors. It is a true black and it is just divine. If it's a little bit too black for you and you're wanting it a touch lighter, once it's done, if you're using chalk finish, actually if you're using silk finish as well, it does work. Use some white wax over it. It's really beautiful and it just gives it a slight vintagey feel without taking away from the black. Um, I've got a whole table here in the store at the moment um, that I've done that with and it still feels really beautiful and luxuriously black, but it's just a little bit vintagey and it just softens the black. So. Painting, we just go from one end to the other as much, as much as you can. Chalk finish, you are always going to have more brush strokes than what you will with silk finish. However, the carbon in particular, you'll actually feel, it feels quite thin. It goes on beautifully. You still get amazing coverage as you can see, but you, I find that I get a lot less brush strokes with carbon in particular, compared to some of the other chalk finish colors. It all just comes down to what's in it, but the carbon is just beautiful. Now I've got the heater on in here so you can see, oh, I don't think you guys can see, it's already dry. <laughs> all right, and the edges, now the edges aren't perfect. There's still a bit of texture there. This is an old piece. I'm not looking to hide every single little imperfection. I never ever hide imperfections, um, only if they're like significant enough that I feel like they need to be. The top, I just, I just wanted it that little bit smoother. That's why I filled it the second time. But these edges, I don't mind. It's an old piece, it's a rough piece. Um, I don't think we ever quite solve the mystery as to what it is. There was a few really good suggestions. Um, it's just a really cool piece. It's very unique. I've never seen anything like this and that's why I grabbed it. Despite it's appalling condition. I'm just gonna smooth that bit out there because it, um, I got a bit carried away with my paintbrush. All right, so the sun, the sun, the sun's come out. Of course it has. So I know you can't, it's quite glaring but it's already down here, starting to dry. Uh, it is warm in here. I find chalk finish dries incredibly fast. Silk finish takes a little bit longer, I find. Um, but chalk finish in particular, 
I find it dries really, really fast. You can always whack it in front of a heater if you want it to dry that little bit faster. So that's that bit. We're just gonna sit that aside for a second without getting paint everywhere. We're gonna let that dry a little bit. Let's come over to the door. Then we're gonna go back and we're gonna start hemp oiling that. Uh, sorry, I've just moved the camera on you. Now we're gonna start hemp oiling the sides of it. So the outside will be like 90% done. We'll just have to seal the carbon. Um, I won't be sealing it today. I do like to make sure that my paint um, has sort of overnight to fully dry before I start sealing it. It's very rare that I seal same day. Um, but again, we'll see how we're going. Um, I might, I'll probably do it tomorrow morning. And I can show you all as well if you'd like to see the hemp finish, ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, hemp finishing oil on the chalk finish carbon. I can do that as a video as well. I don't know if I'll be able to do it as a live, but I'll certainly be able to do a video on it as well to show you because it's really, really beautiful. Hemp finishing oil is a natural oil. And once it's cured, it takes about 30 days, it is very, very hard wearing, very durable. I have it on my own personal dining table which is very rarely used as a dining table. Um, more often than not, it's actually used as a workbench. And it's been on there, it'd be almost two years. Still as good as the day I did it, starting to feel a little bit dry, a little bit rough. So I will need to be, just do another really light coat shortly, um, as soon as my husband's current project is cleared off it. I will definitely be doing a second coat, but really, really durable. Um, Fantastic on timber, raw, on stained timber as well. I do it on all of my pieces that I've stained um, with Pure Eco Staining Glaze. I've used over other stains as well. I'm just sort of filling in all these little, all these bits, because they're a bit of a pain. Um, really, really beautiful over stains and fantastic over chalk finish. You can use it over silk finish, however, I don't think it looks as nice. Um, and Silk Finish already has its own built-in top coat. There's not really any point. Also that top coat stops the oil from actually soaking in. So really, once you've given it a really good buff, it's just gonna sort of sit there. It will still dry and cure. Um, it will do that regardless. It doesn't need to soak in to do that. Um, but it's just, there's not really any point. You're just wasting product. Um, but I have a chalk finish over any um, porous paints, chalk, um, milk paints as well. It's fantastic on. And Timber absolutely loves it, as does veneer. Veneer is just a really thin piece of timber and that's what's on this cabinet. So we're going to be using it on that today. It's quite dry what's on there. So, and giving it a coat of hemp oil. It's just going to stop it from drying out and stop it from evidently cracking as it dries out, which is very common with veneer. It gets too dry and then eventually it starts to crack. Um, it's very, very common, unfortunately, but it's just part of it. All right, so I'm just getting, these are, hang on, let me bring it up to the camera for you. I don't know how well you can see it. Oh uh, yeah, you can sort of see. Can you see how rough it is? It's just the timber grain, but it's very rough and very, very exposed. This one appears a little bit easier. So I'm just really working that paint in to make sure that I get it all. So I'm only going to do the second coat. I'm not going to do a third. I might come in with a little brush, just like a little artist brush, and um touch up, up in any bits that I've missed because there'll always be those few bits that you miss. Um, but I just want to pretty much get it all with this second coat. Carbon typically doesn't need a second coat in the chalk finish. I find silk finish does. Um, but sometimes I do like to do a full second coat anyway and then just any touch ups that it needs but the coverage is outstanding. So most of the time, 
even a full second coat isn't always necessary. Hello, Kate. How's everyone going with the rain? We have had quite a lot of flood water. We're lucky we're sort of up a little bit, um, but we've got two major lakes next to us that have both flooded just here in Eagle Hawk. Um, so, but we've been pretty lucky, but I know there's a few that haven't been, but how's everyone else going? Has, I haven't really heard anything, but as other parts of Australia have been really hit with these floods and the rain as well, or is it mainly just Victoria? I haven't sort of had much of a chance to do anything um, the last few days, including looking at the forecast and deciding whether or not I'm going to open or stay home. Hi and dry, beautiful, fantastic to hear, Nicola. How's your new house going, love? All right, so nice and done. That's looking really, really good. I'm just making sure that I don't have any like big drips of paint. It's just a little bit easier sometimes to catch it when it's still a bit wet. But that's looking really, really good. So. We're going to pop this aside and it's now going to dry. Um, so the back of the door and the internals will be painted, but I'll do that another day when I decide what color to do them. So I'm just going to, where am I going to put this? I'm just going to pop this out the back. Oops. I'm put my finger in the paint. So the inside of the door will be the same as the cupboard. I'm just going to go pop this out here on the table. Oh, good to hear. Some parts of New South. Just as bad, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, our grass is just, it's sludge. Our poor chooks are just soaked and we can't get out to them because it's just so wet. Even the dogs won't go out on the grass right now. Um, but we've got insanely picky dogs as well, which isn't helping. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's horrible. We wanted rain and now it's just, it's too much rain, isn't it? All right, so I've just moved everything. Give me two seconds, let me carefully, without breaking my body or anything else for that matter. Use my muscles. really good so we're going to peel off this bit of tape lovely so we take that up in the first live just to make sure we didn't get any paint on this beautiful video so i'm going to go on the other side as well now what i am looking at though I didn't really realize it the other day. He's down the bottom here. Let me move it a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. We've got, where are we? We've got this lip and it's not, look, it's all right, but it's not amazing. So what I'm actually thinking, we might just do that lip in the carbon, but let's hemp oil this and then I can tape it off and do that later. So, hemp finishing oil on this. The veneer's in very good condition. Um, few, very minor marks, nothing major. The back has a few chips. This one's probably the most severe one, but once we put the hemp oil on it, it will be fine. It will still be visible to an extent. Um, the other side's really nice. 
actually I'll show you these as well. Um, but really, really beautiful, really beautiful linear. So I'll just show you this one. See these little bits here? These little patches that they've put in, there would have been something there. Um, or it may have gotten damaged at some point. So it's actually been patched up and it's been patched up really, really nicely. But I love little details like that. You can see it is star, oh, you guys can't see it all, can you? Hang on, there you go. See, it's just started to crack, um, but even though it's curved, it's actually really, really good. There's no other cracking in it. Uh, there's a couple little patches down the bottom here as well, but for a veneer, and it's a very, very thin one, it's actually in really good condition. So we're gonna go in with our hemp finishing oil. I know, Nicola, I'm so excited to put the hemp oil on this. All right, so let me just grab my few little thingamabobs. All right, so hemp finishing oil. These come in 500 mil and 125 mil. They come with a solid lid on them, but you will receive one of these little pot cap lids as well, just to make the pouring easier. Um, they've just got these lids on them so that we can ship them safely without having them explode and go everywhere because we know what the post office can be like. Um, and let me show you this little trick. So I get asked all the time, what's my piece going to look like with just a clear wax? or with hemp finishing oil. So let me show you. You're gonna take some water, and spray it onto the piece, spray it onto your cloth. I'm gonna spray it onto my cloth just because I don't wanna get water everywhere. Um, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna wipe that on your piece. Now that color that you're getting is the color that you're going to get with your hemp oil. So I love how rich and beautiful that looks. So that's the natural color of the timber. That's what you're going to achieve with hemp oil or with a clear wax, okay? It's pretty much going to be this color. It may look a touch darker when you first do it, um, but that's just as it's drying. As it dries, it, it can go a little bit lighter. But in saying that, every single timber's different, but this is the quickest and easiest way, and it applies to every single timber. Easiest way to see what sort of finish you can get with just a little sprinkle of water. So let me switch my cap out. Brand new bottle of hemp oil. I am, um, it is a brand new bottle. I just tipped some into my old bottle for my husband to take with him to fix my mother-in-law's front door uh, because it was, it's a timber, very, very dry. So he fixed that up for her last weekend. So brand new bottle though. Which is exciting. I always love opening a new bottle. I've gone through four or five of these now and I use it a lot. All, right, all clean after I finished sanding it. I did use an electric sander. Um, I just gave them a really, really quick clean. Now, we're using a microfiber cloth. You can use a brush if you like, um, but I find a cloth's fine. You're just going to tip some oil onto your cloth and wipe it on. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, this is not like paint, etc. You're not going to end up with marks where you don't want it. You're not going to end up with lines, etc. either. So you can just go in as normal. That top edge, the paint is dry. So I'm not too fussed about getting the hemp oil up there. But we're just going to wipe that on doesn't matter what direction you just want to get it on there now the application if you wanted to use a wax is exactly the same all right you're just going to wipe it on and get it onto the piece how beautiful is that oh uh, I really, really love it. So with hemp oil, the key is little. Don't put too much on because you'll end up with quite a sticky mess, okay? So just a little at a time. 
wipe it on and you'll be able to see where it's sitting. Okay, so I like to pop it on, give it overnight, come back, give it another bath, see where that oil's sitting. Um, let me see if I can bring you. That's a little bit better. Can you see just here where it's like, it looks really wet? You can see the oil, but whereas up here, it's looking a lot drier. So that's the oil sitting on the surface. Up here, it's all dried in. You want it like that. If it's all just sitting on the surface when I come back in 24 hours, um, or overnight, so 12, 12 hours-ish, um, <laughs> at some point in the near future, when I come back, if it's all looking like there's a lot of oil sitting on the surface, I'm just going to give it a good buff and I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to put any more. If it's looking like this, it's probably all right. But if it's still looking, let me turn it a little bit. If it's starting to look quite dry again, um, that's only a very, very small amount of oil just there. There's none there. There's quite a lot here, a little bit here. If it's starting to look and feel like it's really dry, I will go in with a second coat, okay? Every single bit of timber is different and you're really just going to listen to the timber, watch what it wants, and you may find it may take a few days for it to decide what it wants as well. Every timber is different. It can be a bit temperamental, um, but it does get there in the end, okay? So, and I like a microfiber cloth. You can use whatever you like. Um, you just want it to be lint free. Um, and you're just going to wipe that oil on until you've got a nice, beautiful finish. Okay, and if you put too much on and just leave it sitting there as well, and it starts to cure, it's just going to end up being a very sticky, horrible mess that's incredibly hard to clean as well. So make sure that you are buffing it really, really well and not putting too much on. So I'm just sort of pushing it in along here. It's just that little bit textured. It's just from because that's where the door sits. This is where the hinges were. Hinges is gonna be a whole other battle for this piece because I'm gonna to have to get all new ones. The ones that were on it were no good. Alright, but I do have the original baker light handle which I'm going to be putting back on it. Alright, so let's give it a little turn. Oh, not everything, just a piece ideally. A little turn. So you can see we've gone, whoops, hang on, this side. <laughs> we've gone from this really dried out veneer, very pale brown, to this really rich chocolatey brown that's nice and hydrated. It's now doing its thing. It's having a good drink of the hemp oil and it's going to be durable. Um, it's going to stop any future cracking. Uh, it may need reapplying at some point in the future, but for at least one to two years, I'd say it will be 100% fine. Um, but I'm really, really, really happy with that. I think it's gorgeous. So let's do the other side and we'll see how dry this top is. We might even be able to do some on the top. Normally I wouldn't, but I don't know. I'm in a good mood. Let's see. All right. And you can see the inside. It's that really horrible brownie. Um, what would you call it? Maroon brown. It's just, it's dated. It's old. And now you can see how dark this is going. It's just very, very dark. Um, and I feel like it's just not the right bit, the right finish for this piece. So again, wiping it all over. Now we will give this a very gentle sand as well in a minute. Now the hemp oil's on. The fibers in timber stand up naturally when they get wet. They just get a little bit excited. So we're just going to give them a gentle sand just to knock back any of those and make sure that we've got a nice, smooth, beautiful finish as well. The sun's really come out now, which is nice. Nice change from the rain. Hopefully the flooding isn't too bad. Let me feel when we do this part, giving the piece a chance of survival. Yes, yeah, definitely. 
I think without this, like this piece, I brought it off marketplace. It was in such poor condition. Um, I would have been very surprised if anybody but the furniture flipper brought it, to be honest, um, or somebody specifically wanting to restore it. Mind you, I also thought it was massive. Um, <laughs> I'm really glad that it's not actually. I love how, how I love the size and how small it is, but I feel that without this restoration and this refinishing, this piece, it was destined for the tip 100%. It was in really poor condition. You definitely, this is one of those pieces, you had to have a bit of know-how. Um, you had to have a few tools on hand, absolutely. But I think there's always pieces like this that just, they deserve a bit of love. And look at that veneer now. You'd never know that that was in as bad a condition as it was. You'd never know. It's absolutely beautiful. It feels gorgeous. And these curves to it are just divine. So just give it a good buff. Make sure it's all wiped in. Yeah, it's actually feeling really good. But it's a little bit rough in a few spots. I'm going to grab some fine sandpaper. Give me two seconds to find my roll. really fine sanding block and just while the oil's on there this is fine going with the grain which is the lines and the timber really really gently I'm not putting any pressure down I'm just letting the sanding block do its job knock down any of those fibers that are standing up and need a bit of a redirection as to where they're meant to be. I must say, I'm glad that I waited to do this piece until I was in the right head space to do it because this is just incredible. And now I feel it. And I can feel how beautifully soft that is. There is nothing better than a really nice soft piece of timber when it's been sanded and hen foiled. It's, I'm a very, I like to touch things. <laughs> Can't keep my hands to myself. I like to touch things like this. And this smoothness is just divine. It's like walking through spotlight and touching all those really big fluffy, um, beautiful blankets and the towels and that. It's just one of those feelings it's just a joy to touch this <laughs> quite the conversation if nobody knew what I was talking about then so another little buff when you're buffing um, you can use a bit of force you don't have to be gentle about it you're not going to hurt it but I'm just going to make sure that we're nice and smooth. Run your hands back over it. It touches your best friend with this sort of thing. It's just starting to feel, it's not starting, still just feeling a little bit rough, just on this curve. Oh, my voice is a bit echoey talking into the cupboard. Just like that. Give it another little buff. That's better. Beautiful. Alright, let's turn it back around and do the other side. I'm really annoyed now that I don't have my um, doodad. What do you call it? Roller. Because I can't do the inside and I really want to get it finished now. Alright, so again, <laughs> we're just going to very gently.
apologise for all the traffic. The doors are open and I know that you guys are hearing all of it as well. Who knows, we might get another customer today. It's been a crappy couple of weeks for recycle. All of you guys that have come out to see me though, thank you so much. And for everyone online, thank you. So we've got some big events coming up. Uh, there's going to be an Eagle Hawk Christmas market, uh, which I'm really, really excited about. There's apparently going to be a window competition for the best window display for the retailers. Um, and I'm very, very competitive. So <laughs> you should have seen me the last few nights, like planning my window display. <laughs> I'm... I want to win. I don't care what the price is. I want to win. I love, love, love Christmas. I'm very excited for Christmas. We're not far away now. All right. This is feeling beautiful. Giving a good buff. That feels really, really nice. There's no rough spots. So now I'm going to leave all of that. And I'm going to come back to this tomorrow and I'm going to see how the oil is sitting. I'll give it another buff regardless, but we'll see. If it's starting to look really dry, I will pop another coat over. I don't think it is, judging by how much it's soaking in already and that there's quite a lot still sitting on the surface. I don't think it's going to soak in to the point where I will need to um, do a full another coat. So I'll just wait and I'll see what it's looking like tomorrow, how it's feeling tomorrow, if it's starting to feel quite rough and dry again, of course, I'll do another coat. Um, you can do as many coats as you like. Typically though, I've never done more than two. Most timbers don't need more than two, even the roughest, driest timbers. Um, but this is looking really good. It feels amazing. Um, I'm really, really happy with how this has come out. Now, as for the top, sorry, let me just, Thank you. 
want to wipe it up, we're going to do the very last hand motion. You don't have to, uh, but the chalk finish is definitely not going to stand up like the uh, timber teeth. Obviously, we're not dealing with timbers, but we're just very gently going to wipe this on. Brushing on um, will be easier. Running it a little bit, again, a little bit goes a really long way. Make sure I get down those edges as well. Adding a little bit more on your cloth to get into detail, always helps and then keep it looking fast. Sometimes it's having that little bit less on the hand, just makes it a little bit harder. The tempo is more natural, pushing the first hand with it. Very, very easy. Always make the hand work amazing after wiping it this. Just make sure you wipe it on. And just like that, we're already done. So it's just like wax. I love using wax all the way on your skin. It feels it's so much quicker than top coating. I find it significantly easier and looks how nice that skin is. So while uh, we've still got a bit on there, we're going to come in with our um, very common things, that standing sponge. And we're really lightly, I'm not putting any pressure down, I'm just sliding it. I find this just helps me get a really nice smooth finish. This way it's going to feel really lovely. Very gently. Going to do those front edges around this side. Beautiful. So you can see it's sinking in really, really well. Remember to keep rotating your cloth. If you're finding your cloth is just getting way too covered up, too much product, um, you can. And then we're the top finish. Get a good buff. Get the excess off as best as you can. And then you're going to leave it. And you have to leave. You've got to leave it overnight. Let it do its thing. Come back. Give it another buff. And then you've got to leave it. It does take up to 30 days to cure. You can use it within 10 to 15 days comfortably. Always make sure you're using a toaster. But um, it will just continue to do its thing. Okay? So you just want to give that a really good buff. It's also going to help push that hemp oil into your cloth as well. So that short finish will be for us. It's just going to bring it up and push it into a really, really nice finish. It may feel a little bit patchy. May look a little bit patchy to begin with, but as it's on the skin, it will be fine. Okay? Alright. I think that will do it for today.